Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking apart my Space Navigator. It's a smaller version of the better known space ball that you can use in CAD to uh, slowly rotate and manipulate CAD models. I loved it. Um, it just stopped responding. I think there's something, uh, some loose connection or something. If I can fix it, great. But if nothing else, I'm interested to see what the uh, mechanism is on the inside. So let's check it out. I apologize. I know it's uh, kind of nasty, but like I said, it's been around a long time and it's been in the, the bottom of my bag and stuff. Um, so I've got my initials on the bottom. It's, it's a really nicely designed product. It's got some nice heft to it, nice metal finish, nice rubber grip on the bottom so it doesn't slide around on the table. It has a really good um, soft touch feel here on the knob or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it does have like a, a springiness to it. So it always goes back to kind of its home position. Yep, all right, there you go. And they are just Phillips. They're not some uh, Torx or proprietary head, which is nice. All right, looks like three of the same screw, which is nice. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Okay. So the base seems like it's just a weight, which doesn't shock me. That seems about right. And then uh, wires going into the, the guts in the top. So let's get this separated. Okay. All right, so that doesn't really want to come out. connector was holding it in place. I have this little folding magnifier I got off a McMaster car, I think. Uh, highly recommend it. It just folds out and then the focal distance for the lens is the base of the thing, so uh, you can just set it on whatever you want to look at, or half the time I just end up holding it like this. I'm just holding it as in a magnifier. And it works really well. I think this one is just a five times, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a pretty useful useful range. So I'm gonna look in here real quick, see if I can see anything broken. All right, so that gets rid of the ring. <laughs> all right, so all the springiness and sensing is still between here and there. They're gonna make me really bust into this thing, aren't they? You can just barely see some springs in there, that's about it. So after some poking around, it looks like it's kind of uh, broken up into thirds. So there's uh, one spring soldered there, and then there's these white uh, pads. So there's one here and one here and the spring there. So if I cut a window like this, there doesn't seem to be anything attached to the side. So I should be able to see in there pretty well. Well, I got in. Doesn't really show us a whole lot. Looks like they solder the spring to this board and to this board. That's interesting. I wonder if this whole assembly just gets pushed in and glued. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Let's get back to the bench. All right, so as a recap, this is the side that faced down. This is the top of the cap. These are just foam bumpers just to keep things from going too far, I assume. So, ugh. Maybe we'll uh, leave those. Super interesting technique with the springs getting soldered. I don't see, I mean, it could be on another layer, but I don't see any traces coming from those. So I don't think they're actually doing anything other than mechanical, but that would be cool if they were just like measuring the inductance or resistance or something that changed when the uh, spring moved. But now we got to figure out how to get in there. Oh, I see what's going on now. All right, before I wasn't sure what these lines here were, but that turns out is is this part of the shell coming down through this 
PCB getting soldered into place. They use solder as a lot of structural joints on this thing. It's kind of interesting. I don't really know what's going on in here. I can see some some stuff in the middle connecting. I can't tell if the walls get used, although they must be connected to something because there's some solder there. I just got this fancy uh, Weller soldering iron that I haven't really used yet, so let's see how this goes. Alright, everybody can yell at me in the comments, tell me how to actually desolder things. I wouldn't mind learning that, but I'm just going to cut these. Uh, oh, I, that's, that's pretty awesome. Alright, so inside, there's two LEDs on each of these three sides. They're all facing directly towards the middle, or more importantly, facing the opposite side which have these um, phototransistors. So this part goes down in between. And so this acts as a barrier between the LED and the phototransistor on the opposite side. And they have a vertical slot and a horizontal slot. So as this thing moves around, you're gonna get different, let's see, is it different amounts? Or I wonder if it changes yeah, it probably changes exactly where it, where the light lands on that phototransistor. I'm not sure, but you know, you have X and Y on three axes and then a bunch of math and you can tell where this top part is moving in relation to the base. So not so much a mechanical way of doing it. The mechanical part is really just these springs just holding the two parts separate and not wanting to get too far away from their nominal length but the actual sensing, which I assumed it probably was, was electrical. So I thought that was pretty cool. I've wanted to know what's inside this thing for a long time, and now I know. Um, maybe this can be uh, useful to you in some future project. I would definitely check the IP. I'm sure they have some kind of patent on, on at least some part of this technology. I hope you thought that was interesting, and who know? I had a flux capacitor in my space navigator. Let me know in the comments below if you think I missed anything, anything else you want me to dig into and take some pictures of, um, I will definitely do that. I'll post some pictures on uh, Instagram as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.